After a week of mega cap tech earning and also some uh, volatile economic uh, report along with the FOMC meeting and uh, Jay Powell press conference, we found he saw S&P 500 finish the week in the green here and it just barely make it to the green at the end of the week, uh, close up half a percent. Now looking at the Russell 2000, that was the, uh, the biggest winner here, uh, close up the week at 1.68% with the Nasdaq Composite up 1.43%. The Dow Jones Transportation did also uh, quite well. It was up 1.17% uh, along with the Dow Jones Industrial, 1.14%. The Nasdaq 100, almost 1%, up 0.97%. As I said earlier, the S&P 500 up 0.55%, and the New York Stock Exchange Composite only up 0.19%. But all in all, all the indexes are in the green for the week. Now, if we take a look at this uh, weekly uh, price action here, you see this engulfing candle here. And right now, the price is still within uh, this candle, uh, this engulfing candle here three weeks ago. So next week, we'll be uh, watching to see which end of this candle will the price break. Will it break above or will it break below? Now, before we uh, take a look at the price action to try to get some clue on uh, which direction the price will break, let's go and take a look at the market sentiment and the market internal and see is there something there that might give us a little bit more clue on which side of this candle the uh, price action will break in the coming week. The uh, VIX is still coming down here, so the uh, market participant are getting a little bit more complacent now. It's uh, back down to 13.49 uh, as of Friday. But the pre-call ratio is still sitting just barely at the uh, edge of this 0.75. So, uh, you know, right underneath this uh, uh, zone here. So obviously the uh, market participant is getting complacent, but also are not totally risk on, but they are not also shying away from uh, putting on some risk. So right now it's still kind of uh, cautiously uh, bullish. That's basically how I would read this from the market participant. And here looking at the internal, we see that the up-down volume ratio other than Tuesday, Tuesday was basically got spooked, the market got spooked by the uh, wage inflation, right? So that's the sticky part of the inflation when the wage, uh, you know, the labor cost goes up. The only way to remedy that is basically a recession. Okay? So uh, that was spooked the, uh, the market here on Tuesday. But other than that, throughout the week, it was pretty positive. Uh, likewise for the advanced decline, the daily advanced decline. So all in all, the uh, uh, internal from the up-down volume and also the uh, daily advanced decline showing us that the market is still pretty much intact you know, on the uh, upside. And here looking at the New York Stock Exchange new high, new low, we also noticed that the number of new high start to come up a little bit as well. And the uh, new low still hovering below this uh, 50 area here. So that's a positive and you see that the uh, margin between the new high and new low is also increasing in favor of the uh, number of new high. And likewise, looking at the cumulative AD line, we see that the New York Stock Exchange cumulative AD line pretty much checking along and uh, you know making a higher high. Likewise, for the S&P 500, making higher high. So we are not seeing any sort of a divergence between these two. Similarly, in the Nasdaq market, we also noticed uh, you know the sell-off on Tuesday, the remainder of the week. It was uh, pretty positive in terms of the up-down volume ratio as well as the uh, daily advance decline. And in the NASDAQ also, we're seeing that there are more new 52-week high than 52-week low on Friday. And we've been seeing that the 52-week uh, high been pretty, you know, holding pretty much steady while the 52-week uh, low is starting to come down a bit. We are noticing the uh, cumulative AD line in the NASDAQ market is also making a higher high along with the NASDAQ 100. So all in all, the market sentiment and also the market internal is telling us that we could still expect some little bit more upside on this uh, little bounce here. And it seems to be uh, forming a uh, bear flag. We're gonna take a look at the price action in a little bit more detail and see what we should be on the lookout for in the coming week. Let's take a look at the ES, the E mini S&P 500 market profile here. Notice that uh, you know, today, that's Friday, we got a little bit of a gap and it took out this one-time framing down. So now it's reverting back to a one-time framing up. So we're going to see what this continue because basically it's important here because it broke this 
broke out of this uh, balance area. And now it is trying to uh, come back in to this balance area. So we'll see what it be able to come up and get back into this 5200 area and start cleaning up some of these unfinished business. And if it does get up to here, then uh, there's a good possibility that this pullback is pretty much over and we could see the uh, E-mini S&P 500 or the S&P 500 come up and put that all-time high in play. Now, if it uh, reverse back, let's say this is just a, a little bit of a fake out and come back in, then once again, we are still looking at a look above and fail and we'll be uh, looking for this you know, 50, uh, you know, 5,400 area uh, to uh, come into play and possibly come down and take care of these business, unfinished business left by, um, you know, back in February and dip down into this 5,000. And here, as you can see from this volume profile chart here, right, we're noticing here, it, uh, you know, here's this one time framing down and we got this gap here today. Now, we uh, basically are looking at this particular, uh, you know, balance area here. Right, this way right here, and you see that there are a lot of trading in this area, and you see that there are a lot of volume here. Now, it is, uh, you know, one of the uh, the premises that we were looking at last week was for the possibility of filling in this area here. Remember, there was a little bit of an empty area here. So to try to fill into this area and make this into one huge balance area, that's the uh, one of the uh, the premise that we are looking at is for the price to chop around here to build in, you know, build up more volume and then kind of fill in this floor here and uh, make it a nice little bit of a distribution and increase this distribution or this uh, balance area into one continuous uh, huge balance area because right now we're basically looking at a fragment one here and then one here, right? So basically, we want to fill this area here. And that's uh, what we're going to be watching for, uh, for the price action, would it be able to fill in or would it come back down? So if we take a look at this uh, daily uh, ES chart here, where I have the volume profile here, and we see that right now, you notice that uh, we could be uh, looking at this uh, potential bear flag, right? If it breaks uh, below this, uh, you know, get below this, uh, this little bit of a volume then here, somewhere around 50-50, and then it will... Uh, we are looking at that possibility and possibly come down into this area here. Now in this area, we were doing a little bit of a major move to kind of get some idea of what that percentage is of a pullback. And we're basically looking at the possibility of uh, somewhere around 9% if it come down to this area. Now, if even though if it uh, come, dip, uh, come down to this area here, where we are talking about this possibility you know, this zone here come into this uh, high volume area. And uh, we're basically looking at somewhere around that 9 to 10% type of pullback. So if we uh, come down to this area here, so we're basically looking at somewhere around 11%. So we're still well within that, you know, 8 to 10% type of pullback. But most likely we're going to be watching this area here, this uh, 4866 uh, area, okay? So uh, 4,900 area to see what we get uh, the uh, support and have it bounce back up. Because we're still looking for the possibility of another new all-time high on the S&P 500. And here looking at the SPY, we're basically looking at the SPY similarly as the ES. And we're basically looking for this kind of to fill in here. And all again, it's basically making a, a little bit of a bear flag. Now if we could break above and then come back into this balance area, and we could see price move toward this all-time high here up at the 524 area. But if it uh, just kind of chop around and come back in here, then we're basically looking for a uh, you know break of this uh, bear flag or we are looking at a look above and fail type of price action uh, coming back down to this area here and possibly get down to this 482, 483. So again, using this tool and just kind of measure to see what percentage of a pullback does that represent. And we're only talking about somewhere around 8% here. Now, you have to come down to this area here in order for us to see that 10, 11% pullback, you know, get down to, you know, this area here. This is 9%, and uh, here is the uh, 10, 11%. So, in other words, you know, if it uh, come down to this area here, okay, 
then we'd be looking at that typical 10% type of pullback. And for the NQ, the E-mini uh, NASDAQ 100, we're also looking at this balance area for this thing to uh, basically just kind of balance out. And right now, we're also looking at the possibility of a, a little bit of a bear flag as well. So the uh, key thing to watch for next week is we'll be able to get above this 18,100 and come up maybe uh, to this uh, high volume no and see what it get rejected back down or what it get above it and then come up and take out the all time high. So, so the key thing is to watch this 18,100 level to see what it be able to get above that. Then there's a possibility of putting in the all time high to uh, put in play. But if it is uh, unable to at least, uh, you know, come up and uh, break above this high volume, no, even though that it could get above this 18,100 or it might get rejected back down, then we're basically looking for this thing to retrace back down to this 17,100 area and then possibly come down to this 16,600 for possible support. Now, once again, if we uh, go and measure to see what this uh, pullback represent, if it come down here in terms of percentage, you're basically looking, talking about a 10% type of a move, right? Pulling back to this area here. And if we are uh, pulling back just to this level here, you know, this way right here on this, then we're basically talking about uh, a little bit over eight and a quarter percent. So it's between that eight and 10%, and that is typical of a pullback. Now, this is uh, still considered a bounce until it could take out this area here, you know, break this, uh, you know, uh, this high volume no, and then move above, move above it, then we're basically looking for price to come up to test the all-time high. And for the QQQ, we're basically looking at this, uh, you know, this area here, right? This area, so somewhere around above uh, 445 area. Okay, so to see what it be able to come up and move above that, then we'll be uh, looking at this all-time high in play. Now again. If we uh, get rejected from this high volume node next week and push us back down, you know, basically looking for a price to come back down to this 413 area and then possibly come down to this 47 and this area here. Remember, that's the, uh, you know, 8 to 10 percent type of uh, uh, pullback or correction. Uh, so if we come down here, we see this right here is pretty much that 10 and a half percent. And if we come down to this area here, that will be somewhere around this uh, uh, 11 to 12 percent. So we're basically looking at this area here, you know, somewhere around up here, this 8 percent to this area here to the 10 percent. So, you know, come down to this uh, balance area. Okay. So we're looking at this area here, right? Right now, it's still inside of this balance area. And we're going to see what it come down and break this balance area here and come down into this balance area. So that's basically uh, what we're looking at for the coming week. And if you'd like to get a little bit more detailed analysis from me on a daily basis on the ES and also the SPY, go check out my Substack newsletter at uh, smtraderca.substack.com. So if you like the content of this video, be sure to smash the thumbs up to give it a like. And if you are new to this channel, click the subscribe to help support this channel by subscribing. Thank you for watching and good luck on your trading.